Judas. Hello and welcome to the news at when. When, Tudor times, when England broke with Rome and got its own church, which really pleased Henry VIII and really upset the Pope. Here with more details is Bob Hale with the Catholic Report. Bob. Thank you, Sam. Well, there it is, Tudor England. That's Henry VIII right there. And as you can tell, it's wall-to-wall -wall Catholics as far as the eye can see, much as it has been for, oh, let's say, 900 years. But Henry's got a bit of a problem, because he wants a divorce, which is exactly the sort of thing that the Catholic Church doesn't like. So he asks the Pope if he can have a divorce, and he says, no way, Jose, which is weird, because his name's Henry. So what does Henry do? He breaks away from the Pope. There he goes, and he starts up his own church here in England called, unsurprisingly, the Church of England. And and since he's in charge of it, he basically grants himself a divorce and marries Anne Boleyn, who's a Protestant, meaning she believes in the Bible, but not in the Pope. Now, since the country's turning Protestant, Henry starts being a bit mean to the Catholics. And by a bit mean, I mean he executes them, closes their monasteries, and takes all their money. Then he gets married another four times, and he dies. Well, that's what six wives will do for you. And that, believe it or not, was the easy bit, as we can see if we look at the religionometer. So, the next king after Henry is someone from your school. No, not really. It's Edward VI, who's only nine years old. And he is a Protestant, that's right. And he's a king for ages and ages and ages until he finally dies at the ripe old age of 15. Yep, 15, when he hands over to Lady Jane Grey, another Protestant who gets to enjoy ruling the country for a whopping nine days before she's overthrown by Queen Mary, a Catholic this time. So Catholic, in fact, that she burns 300 Protestants at the stake. Although, strictly speaking, that's not being Catholic. That's just being horrid. So England is Catholic again and everyone can just sit down and get used to it. But not for long, because here comes Queen Elizabeth. And you've guessed it, she's a Protestant. She even fights off a Catholic invasion, the Spanish Armada. Then Elizabeth is followed by James I, who's a Scottish Protestant. Or is it a Protestant Scottistan? Either way, he's a Protestant, but he likes Catholics. At least he does until one tries to blow him up. Naughty, naughty Guy Fawkes! And after James comes Charles I, who acts like a Catholic, but basically doesn't care. He just wants to be in charge, which he is, until he's overthrown by that chap. Huh? who's not a Catholic or a Protestant. He's not even a king. Seriously, he's Oliver Cromwell, a Puritan, which is like a really strict Protestant. So strict, in fact, that he chops Charlie's head off and then he bans music, theatre, dancing, Christmas, hedgehogs and fun. Except not hedgehogs. Then he dies. Hooray! And we get the monarchs back. Woohoo! It's Charles II, who is loads of fun. He's also a Protestant, but he converts to Catholicism on his deathbed. So he's a Catholic, but only for a couple of minutes. Then comes his brother, James II, who is a Catholic, always has been, and not just for a couple of minutes, but he doesn't like Parliament. So they chuck him out and bring in his daughter and her husband from Holland, that's William and Mary, and they decide that England is definitely Protestant, as it is today, but only after 185 years of going Catholic, Protestant, Catholic, Protestant, Catholic, Protestant, Catholic, Protestant, Catholic, Protestant. You are getting sleepy. You are getting very sleepy. Hand back to Sam. 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 Yes, the whole Catholic Protestant thing started with Henry VIII's doomed marriage to Anne Boleyn. When marriages come to an end, things have to be divided up. And in this case, Henry divided up Anne. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Have I gone too far?